Peace. Peace and blessings to everyone out there watching. I hope everyone's doing well, doing, uh, you know, doing all right. We're living in a, a rough, rough time, man, with this COVID, uh, this COVID-19. A lot of people uh, are suffering from it. A lot of families are suffering from it, right? And, um, you know, uh, it, it's, 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 uh, it's a rough time. This is a rough time for a lot of people, you know, employment, unemployment, you know, stuff like that. You know, the inability to gather, the inability to have the kids go to school safely, like everyone's, uh, you know, forced to wear masks. Um, but it's something that we're suffering the world over, but it's not the first time that the world suffered. You know, we have, you know, history um, telling us about the, the, the bubonic plague, uh, smallpox, Ebola, SARS, Mercer, um, you know, even every year the flu in and of itself, you know, does a number on the uh, human population. So I I'm just saying that it's a rough time. Let us be considerate of one another. Let us continue to uh, push on with, with our head up. But it, like I said, let us be kind and considerate of one another, man. A lot of time we, we can be real selfish in the way we think and the way we act. Um, all the while other people are suffering you know people are going through you know worse than what we're going through and that's not to minimize what we're going through but perspective is very important right and that's a lesson that i learned a long time ago is perspective when i feel bad i have to realize other people are feeling worse and that doesn't deny me my own feelings that doesn't deny the severity of what i'm going through but that is to say that somebody else is going through a lot worse you know people are being shot out in these streets um uh, 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 you know, law enforcement is under extreme scrutiny. Uh, there are so many situations going on right now where innocent people are being killed, you know, by law enforcement. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's painful, man. It's painful, you know. Um, and a lot of people don't like to talk about race. But we have to talk about race. We have to get out of us what is inside of us. We have to go to the root of things. If we don't go to the root of things, we'll never fully recover from um, the trauma that is within us, you know, and I'm talking about as black people and as white people and minorities and, uh, you know, other people on this planet. We have to be able to, you know, sit at the table at some time and honestly say what we feel, what we think, and how can we move forward? People have these discussions across the board, and they're sporadic, and they're going on daily in many areas, but they don't get the attention that they're supposed to because a lot of people want to sweep the reality under the rug so we can live in a fantasy world. But the problem with that is we look around and we see mass shootings because we have children, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, whatever. They have mental issues. They have mental issues. They're being bullied in school because someone is not addressing you know, why we shouldn't be bullied. You have parents sitting at home and their kids are on the street fighting, but no one is saying after the fight, let's meet with these other parents. Let's bring these kids together and let's find a way, man, to resolve this before it goes further. It, it, it's no longer today they fight. It's, you know, it's done. They best friends. Nah, you're not fighting and becoming friends tomorrow. Your pride not going to let you do that. You fighting and you killing. You know, you fighting and you maiming. You fighting and you're uh, 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 your beef is almost lifelong. So we have to really start getting involved, man, in the community affairs and doing it with a sincere effort. And it's exhausting because it's like, will it ever stop? So we feel hopelessness. But every little bit counts. Every little bit counts. Believe that. Because what may seem little to you is grand to somebody else, you know. So, um, you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, I don't want to be long on this one. I honestly just wanted to say that the contribution, you know, that we can add to one another's lives is, uh, is significant. It's significant. We don't always have to be, you know, clawing at one another, you know, hating one another. First time we see one another, you know, we, we, we find a flaw. We don't see the good. We just find a flaw. Oh, she too dark. Oh, she too light. He too big. Oh, he too skinny. You know, our opinions are our opinions, but they're groomed 
by other people. They're fashioned by TV. So today we like, you know, light-skinned dudes with curly hair. Tomorrow we'll like dark-skinned dudes with six-packs and bald heads, you know, and then we'll like women, you know, who have large behinds and we'll like women with large breasts and we'll like women who are black and tomorrow we'll like the Asian women. We don't like the core of the person. We're superficial, you know, and all of us have that coursing through us, you know what I mean? Because again, we're fashioned by somebody else's uh, mindset. Somebody else is telling us what to think, you know, and this is the reality. This is why TV is popular. You know, you look around today, everybody's head is in a phone. Everybody's head is in a phone. You go on the subway, you go on the metro bus, everybody's head is in the phone. You know, we no longer look at one another. We no longer acknowledge one another, greet one another. Um, and this diminishes courtesy, you know, courtesy. Um, this diminishes respect because if you don't have to look at a person, you don't have to acknowledge their presence. And if you don't acknowledge their presence, then in your mind, they don't live. Uh, they don't exist. I remember reading a book called uh, Left to Tail. Um, it was by a sister, and forgive me if I uh, get her name wrong, by I Immaculate Ili Bagazi. It was a beautiful book, but a painful book about the Rwanda uh, war, or rather slaughter with the Hutus and the Tutsis. Um, you know, and they, you know, the, the, the Hutus rose up against the Tutsis because they were the majority, but they felt like as a tribe, uh, they were made the minority, you know, and this was a colonial design. And, uh, when the Tutsis, the Hutus took over the radio stations and everything, they were calling the Tutsis cockroaches. You know, they were like, kill the cockroaches, kill the cockroaches, kill the cockroaches. You see, they had to take away the human element. You know, they had to say, you know, don't don't call them humans. Don't call them brothers. Don't call them sisters, friends or family. Don't call them our people. They look just alike to me. They were different tribes, but they were both black. Right. So uh, they said, kill the cockroaches. And if you look at a person and you don't see a human, but you see a cockroach, you're going to want to squash it. And it's the same with these streets. We call each other's, uh, pardon my language, you know, we call each other niggas. You know, that's my nigga. You know what I mean? Nah, nah, that's not your nigga. That's your brother. That's your family. You know what I mean? Um, you know, that B. You know, nah, she's a woman. You know, a young lady, queen, you know, broad. Like, like, like these are the words, you know, this is what we're calling them, though. Broads. Uh, Bees, you know, pardon my language again, you know, bitches, you know, they're not that. But this is what we become accustomed to calling them. And so we call them that so we don't see their worth, their, their, their need, and that they've earned respect. We don't see that. We don't want nobody to call our mother that, though. We don't want nobody to call our sister that, um, our nieces that, our wives. We don't want nobody to call them by these offensive names, these disrespectful and derogatory names. However, this is what spews out our mouth daily. This bitch, that, that nigga, this, that nigga, that, that, you know, like. And as long as we allow other people to continue to tell us how to address one another, it's OK. You know, as long as we applaud that, it's OK. And as long as it's OK, we're going to keep seeing these streets get ugly and ugly and uglier. We have to dig deeper. We have to dig deep and we can't always blame other people, but influence is real. This is why uh, companies pay millions of dollars for commercials during the Super Bowl. This is why companies pay big money for commercials because they know if they can get your attention in that moment, they got your eyes, they got your ears and they may get your heart. So they get commercials and they put celebrities in there and they have them, um, you know, drinking beer on the top of a mountain with a spring. You know, they have celebrities jumping over cars with a tennis shoe that won't let you really jump over a car. But you go by it because such and such has it. So we know influence is real. So when people say stop blaming, you know, everybody else, stop. Nah, influence is real. We wear what we wear because we're influenced. You know, none of us would have wore Ralph Lauren uh, if we didn't know who he was or his fashion, you know what I mean? But other people promoted it. And the more people that promoted, the more we say, you know, well, okay, I want to wear it too. You know, and so this is why it's important to support, um, you know, one another. But that's another topic. And we spoke about that before, supporting. Um, and we have to support, you know, we have to support 
uh, our own sometimes, you know, but like I said, we've gotten the habit of letting our minds be fashioned and groomed. Um, but I just wanted to speak on that brief. Like I say, you know, who am I? Just a guy, man, that's, you know, forced himself to look in the mirror daily and, and, and to acknowledge my own flaws, my own shortcomings and working on myself every single day. Um, but it's been a lot of death in these streets. There's a lot of death out here. And, you know, at the hands of the police, at the hands of one another. And we have to find answers. We have to find answers. We have to find more solutions. Um, complain, yes, it hurts. Address it, of course. But sit down and come up with solutions. And, you know, everybody can look in the mirror and say, I need to contribute more to society and humanity. So, again, you know, thank you. I'm just saying, you know, have a good day. But know that you are worth everything. Every individual looking at this is worth everything. Maybe not to me, but to your family, right? To those that love you, to those that care about you, you are worth everything. So understand your own value. And when you come to the table, come with your best. Don't come with your BS, come with your best, you know, and, you know, appreciate others for the same, you know, and if we can just do that, if we can just come with our best, as often as we can, man, we only strengthen one another. So thank you all again for listening to me. This was just a, a piece, just me, you know, talking, me sharing my opinion, my thoughts. And uh, I, I pray that, you know, it means something to somebody. So stay strong out there. Stay strong, stay healthy, stay wise, stay well, and love yourself, you know, and love each other as best you can. Thank you.